One of the best film characters, in my opinion, is Harvey Keitel as Winston Wolf in Pulp Fiction. He's cool, he's suave, he's confident, he's supportive, he drives fast, and he attends black tie cocktail parties at 8 a.m. on weekdays. There are a lot of reasons to love the wolf, but the reason I adore this character is because of his clarity. He's brought in to solve a very simple but very high-stakes problem. Essentially, he's got to help Hitman Vincent and Jules clean up blood and brains out of a car. He doesn't actually pick up a single soapy sponge. He's called in for his special talent, which is to lead the project. And leadership is about balancing directions with emotions with several parties involved. He's got to manage Vincent's anger, redirect Jules' panic, assuage Jimmy's nervousness, and find a demolition yard to dispose of the car. The wolf explains things so simply. He talks carefully through what has to happen, in what order, and why. When his audience seems confused or confrontational, Winston Wolf takes a step back and restages the scene for them. Narrative isn't just about what's at stake. Narrative is not plot. Narrative is not information. Narrative is understanding your audience. When Vincent Vega snaps at the wolf, telling him he doesn't like people barking orders at him and that a pretty please would be nice, Winston says, if I'm short with you, it's because we don't have much time. So pretty please, with sugar on top, clean the fucking car. Narrative is about getting people's attention first, getting them comfortable with you, understanding their need to understand what's going on. Winston Wolfe is cinema's greatest deliverer of narrative. You know who the worst is? Father Brennan in 1976's The Omen. This fucking guy does not know how to start a conversation. <laughs> first, he has the intensity of a dance club coke addict at 1 a.m. on a Friday night. And second, he buries the lead. Like, get their attention Get their attention with the first sentence, Padre. Don't start with, you should give your life up to Jesus Christ and drink his blood, when the actual story is, your child might be the son of Satan and he's going to kill you and your wife. While Pulp Fiction is 100% an A-list B-movie thriller, it's a comedy at its heart. I know it knows how hilarious it really is. The Omen, on the other hand, is very, very serious. It's churchy and weighty, it's dark and sincere, and it's one of the funniest movies I have ever seen. Hi, Cecil. Hi, Jeffrey. Do you have any birthmarks? Oh, any birthmarks? I, I've got a couple of odd-placed moles here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a third nipple. I don't know. Who knows? You don't have the mark of the beast anywhere I, on you? I Not that I know of. I think that's a I might get that tattoo on my the top of my head. That sounds really yeah. nice. Get that six 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 right there, mm -hmm. right on the top of your head, <laughs> right inside the hair. I was I remember being really bummed as a kid because I have a it's a very faint birthmark, but it's long. It's like seven inches long in my armpit, about an inch wide, and it's just kind of like a like a very light discoloration, kind of oh, shaped okay. like a sausage down my armpit, and I remember being really like as a ch young child being like i'm deformed I, the, no one can love me <laughs> oh no and my dad being like uh i mean you wear shirts so you're fine you must never show this birthmark to anyone and hide it in shame <laughs> or you have made a deal with the devil that's right the mark of the devil is a very faint sausage like outline in the armpit <laughs> devil's really into sausages <laughs> yep love them brats it has foretold that Jeffrey Craner will eat sausages. Oh my God. Oh, and I will. I will. <laughs> I will house a sausage like no one's business. That prophecy is coming true. Okay. Well, prophecy, speaking of which, uh, actually, probably more than prophecy, more than, you know, fear of Satan, more than all of the, the, readings of Revelation and the return of the devil and the Antichrist, I think the most prominent theme throughout this music is loud choir singing in Latin. Sometimes, Dominus, Sontis, Dominus, Sontis, Dominus, Sontis. That's all, that's, it's, this is, I, I feel like this, this movie set that bar. I think so the, too. For the the sort of loud choirs uh, singing singing staccato Latin, yeah, in in just like very very like brief readings about this movie and you know kind of what it what it did at the time, what it meant at the time, production of it, or whatever it was. I think it was doing a lot of things like setting up a lot of tropes 
uh, for yeah. us as oh, yeah. we were in the 1970s, really, after Rosemary's Baby, we were fucking ramping up movies about uh, Satan, Satanism, Satan worship, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I, I did see like a little note from one scholar talking about the, you know, off air, you and I were talking about the, the silliness of them explaining that 666 is the mark of the beast and then like kind of going into detail about that. And we're all like, yeah, yeah, we know. Well, this is pretty basic stuff, but it did, it did, I did read a note saying that uh, at the time when they put that into the movie, you know, people who thought a lot about that definitely knew that, but they, they sort of considered that a lot of the just movie going public wouldn't know that at all because it wasn't in the vernacular at the time to think about what's the phrase, um, the you know we weren't talking about the ret- you know the the return of premillennialism that's it that that, yeah. that Jesus would return before the year two thousand and usher in an age of peace or whatever uh, we weren't talking about revelations quite as much as we were nah. when you and I were growing up in the eighties nah not as much Mm-mm. nah and it's also kind of shocking to see all this all this Satan talk coming from like a big Hollywood movie mm-hmm. you know this is pretty mainstream. Like we have Gregory Peck, for God's sakes. Yeah. You know, a, a late career Gregory Peck, but still just being like, what? This is the, the devil. What are you talking about? Get out of here. <laughs> I got to go back to my high paying job as the ambassador to America, to England. That's right. I, uh, yeah, I, it, it, this, the idea for this movie definitely came about. Uh, or I, I don't know if the movie was an offshoot of this, but it but it ties into this notion that I think was written about in the 60s or 70s, somewhere in there, that uh, we started thinking about the idea that if Jesus is returning before the millennium, then either Christ and or the Antichrist might be a child walking around in the world right now. Yeah. Uh, Jesus so is, is coming. Look mm-hmm. busy. <laughs> yeah, this is some real early Y2K shit. So yeah. uh yeah, we we've got some dope ass opening credits. We've got Druidic choir singing hard at you yep. and uh the little outline of a boy and his shadow is the shape of a cross, which doesn't make sense to me cuz I'm like he's Satan. He's he's the shadow of the cross. Oh, there you go. I like shadow, that. Shadow, the dark, the dark version. Mm. Or something. I am down for people naming their children whatever they want to name them. Uh, you know, I'm in full support. You know, give you know, name your son Jacob, the most popular Western name for boys or whatever. Uh Michael, give them a good biblical name. Or sure. Invent a totally new name. I think that that's fun. Uh, you know, why not? But I would say stay away from Damien if you have a general fear of the devil. That's all. I, I feel like this movie in particular might have put that, like stamped that in the public consciousness because this child is so ridiculously evil in this movie and no <laughs> one notices, I no. suppose. Just going about their daily lives. But I feel like, you know, to name your child Damien after this became such a to-do. Yes. It's like naming your child, I don't know, Barbie, I guess. Yeah. You know, like every, everybody knows. They all know. Yeah. They're like, oh, you've got oh, you've got the Satan child uh-huh. name. Uh-oh. Name your child, uh, your child LeBron. Yes. Yeah. That's it. We have high hopes for him. That's right. I've named my child Biden. I'm just kidding. Great. So, uh... We've got American diplomat Robert Thorne and his wife, Kathy. Oh, Kathy. It opens on Robert, like, they're living in Rome. I believe this is Rome. Okay. And uh, we sort of threw voiceover, you know, we sort of understand that his wife was giving birth at this Catholic hospital. And the baby did not survive the birth so he goes not to see his wife but to see the priest (laughs) about like what do i tell her i'm like i don't know talk to your wife tell her what happened you grieve together this is how you this is how life works you could do that (laughs) or you could take what is behind door number two 
which is this child that we've just sort of like thrust into your arms and said, you know, her mom, his mom died. And at the exact same moment, your child was, your child died as well. No, no relatives. Uh, it would be a blessing if you took this, this completely untraceable kid off our hands. Mm -hmm. Here, just, just look how cute, look how cute this baby is. Look how cute this baby. Don't you want this baby? I, just I don't just, tell your wife. Shush, shush, shush. As this movie went on, he is so incredulous about anything that Father Brennan says. Understandably, because Father Brennan is bananas. Uh, but great, but, but yeah. But he's so incredulous that anything horrible is going on with his child. But in this moment, he's like, "Oh, you found another baby, and I could oh. just hand him over to my wife and never tell never. her." That no. our baby died and that, oh, sure. Just you know, avoid that conversation altogether. When that baby grows up to be like six foot five and like barrel chested with like a red hair brow. And yeah. Yeah. So Man, th this oh movie God. is really like how, how, how bare, how deep can you bury is how deep can you bury a secret mm -hmm. and then never talk about that secret again? I was thinking about for my intro because the, the one thing when people, when I talk about writing with anybody and if people are, you know, looking for writing advice or something, I mean, the advice I always give myself is that, listen, in life, you should always be open and communicative. You need to share everything with your family, with your friends, with your partner, anybody who's important and you share something at stake with one another, communicate what's sure. happening in you and without and what your choices you want to make in literature and in film fiction don't never have anyone communicate anything because otherwise we wouldn't have a movie yeah. <laughs> so in this and one you're just creating problems that you're only going to have to solve later for yourself yeah and uh we need to create problems and one of the best ways is to lie to your wife about the baby dying and replace it like it's a child's goldfish secret oh that's right you're like, you know, that first baby, you know, okay, that baby you had, it's living on a farm upstate. <laughs> it's really happy. No, we no, we can't talk. No, it's it's already we already the nuns have already shipped it upstate. Oh my God. This is it's just so bonkers. I'm like I I, I just can't imagine living your whole life with that a lie. Uh and never telling your yeah. son or your wife that nope. this is what you chose to do. Not even when the psychiatrist gets involved. He literally looks at his wife's psychiatrist and the psychiatrist says, she is convinced that that child is not hers. Mm -hmm. And literally Gregory Peck is like, oh, <laughs> I feel like that would, that is the moment. You're like, no, we're, we're, we're just going to lean hard into this, this deep, dark secret. Yep. So we accelerate to, so obviously he takes this he ta uh, baby. He takes the baby. They uh, they name him fucking Damien. And uh, they- A nice classic name. Yeah. And then he's appointed a few years later ambassador to Great Britain. Oh my. We're moving to London, baby. And they got a brand new luxurious mansion. They've got a nanny. Yeah. And- uh, They're driving a Rolls. This is- Shit. Swank. It's so nice. And their um, house is their house is so big. Uh-huh. They even have a dog and they don't even know that the dog is there. <laughs> yeah. There's just a dog on premises that mm -hmm. halfway through the movie, Gregory Pick is like, We have a dog? Oh shit. <laughs> God, this house is big. It's a very nice dog. I love a Rottweiler. Hypno dog. Hypno <laughs> it is hypno dog. Um so there's a there's a fun, like, little silly trope in here wherein we see them moving into this mansion while Damien is still a baby. Yeah. And then yeah. we get, I mean, this transition, Cecil, is just a slideshow of family photos uh -huh. with the song Happy Birthday Happy playing birthday underneath. To you. Happy birthday. And it's so, it's so, like, cute Kodachrome, just like, oh, look, show. little Damien, little Damien's turning five this year oh i can't believe how big he's gotten he's going to be boiling the seas and 
<laughs> flaying men's minds any day now. Oh. And you'll look back and think, what? These were the precious moments. He's so good with locusts, don't you think, hon? I, isn't he so good? So good with animals, <laughs> as we were about ready to see. Oh, so, it's adorable. So fast forward to age five. Giant birthday party at their luxurious English manse. They got they got clowns. They got pony rides. They mm -hmm. got like a little little merry go round. They are mm -hmm. pulling out all the stops. Everyone, ever, all the, the the half hearted happy birthday singing, but they at least know Damien's name. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you got to know the host's name. Yeah, on a big ass party. They have put this child into a suit, a full on suit. And mm -hmm. he will be in suited for the rest of the film, mm -hmm. which is I like kind of interesting. Uh, Damien sort of walks like he has like a stick up his butt the entire yes. time, just like a little this is a very awkward child. But when this... he looks at you and smiles, Dante, Dominus, <laughs> Dante, something horrible is going to happen. Oh my god, this this child in this movie is so funny because he he really doesn't have any dialogue whatsoever like there's a couple nope. moments where he's like no daddy please don't stab me with the holy knife or whatever <laughs> um it, yeah it's but, kind of rare to hear his actual voice he doesn't talk uh -uh. no he's mostly about looking like he's got a cherubic face he's very mm -hmm. cute he's a very cute boy uh but it's about the way he just looks down the barrel of the camera from time to time and goes into slight cute smile to evil smile. Yes. And that's 100% what they cast him on as he's got that smile and that face. Well, there's photographers everywhere because this is a high profile government position. Uh, one of which is Keith, uh, yeah. who is gonna we're gonna spend a lot of time with Keith, the photographer in this uh -huh. movie, who I was delighted because I was like, Time Bandits. Yeah. Evil oh from God. Time Bandits. He's so good in this movie. Like, like I feel like you know, um David Warner is as Keith Jennings is like as like as ridiculous as the choices that Gregory Peck's character makes, Jennings somehow manages to hold it all together. Like, he's the only other person that's not like, eat the blood of Christ, eat the blood of Christ, yeah. kill the beast. He's like, hey, um, just I want to show you something weird in my dark room. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to walk through this with you. And by that point in the movie, we're like, oh, thank God, a voice of reason that's not like total, total psychopath on either end. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, you know, he's there taking photos. He kind of... It, I think this is a great setup to his character, actually, of Keith, because of the way he's, you know, he's taking pictures of of everything. And there, the first few times you see him taking pictures around Robert Thorne and his family is there's a little bit of a, a investigative journalist quality quality because sure. he knows something's up. Yeah. So we sort of feel like there is an antagonist type of quality to him that a little will... bit invasive. Yeah, yeah totally. Which I mean, if this if this movie is you know the Satanic Panic is really just like the the d disintegration of the American nuclear family, uh -huh. you know, family photos can go from family photos to prying into the family business a little too quickly. That line is easily crossed. Yeah, for men of power, totally. men of power who are keeping secrets, who understand great things and do not want to tell anybody or anyone about them. Well, this movie gets right into a fantastic scene, which is first, so we're going to talk about the nanny here. So first, Holly, the nanny, is holding young Damien, and then a photographer is taking pictures of the child mm -hmm. with the nanny holding her. And Kathy is like, oh, absolutely not. You do not get to be in photos. I get to be in photos. Like, wait, oh, wait. Oh, the cameras are out? I suppose it's time to play with my child. <laughs> And Here, she's I'll like, take Damien. Give me Damien. Give me Damien. And then Holly is, looks a little disappointed, but she makes immediate eye contact with Hypno Rottweiler, with Hypno oh Dog. God. Oh, can I pet that dog? <laughs> can, can I pet, I pet that, dog? that dog? I want to pet that dog. I literally throughout this entire movie, that was 
that was the light motif of can i pet that dog can i pet that dog no that is a satan dog don't pet that dog although he gives the dog a little shy little wave uh-huh oh Hi. yeah damien like waves at the dog at Hi. one point and it like it's just the camera work it's this this movie has a lot of fraught silences uh-huh oh this movie's act like it's not short no it's not a shorty uh-uh. and and I think it earns every moment of that. But this movie definitely has a lot of very fraught, like, look into the dog's eyes. Look into Damien's eyes. Mm-hmm. Look, look deeper into the dog's eyes. This is, uh, there's a real try hard quality to this movie of like, get scared, get scared. And it's, yeah. I, I think maybe because, as I've said many times on the show, I in in watching horror movies, just demon possession, Satan child, shit like that, just in general does not get to me unless like there's like demons that are like gouging people's eyes out oh, or jumping yeah. out, like almost yeah. like just monster attacks. But like but the, the idea fear, of like, the fear of the blood of Jesus, you're just like ah, yeah. uh, okay, That's, yeah, okay, whatever you say, yeah. So combining I find that, it, I find it delightful. Oh, one hundred percent. Like it's it, like I don't. It doesn't scare me. I'm not an organized religion guy. So like when you know, by the time we get to the priest who's like, drink the blood of Christ every day, like fucking V8. Uh huh. I was like, oh gosh, yeah. Okay. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. But who got Damien the best birthday gift for his fifth birthday? Clearly, this nanny did. Yes. <laughs> yes, she did. Because next step is we hear as Damien is playing on the slide or what. I don't Damien. even remember. We hear Damien. Damien look, look over here. Me. I love you. Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. She's on top of this house. She's already got a noose tied around her neck, ah. secured to the eve. And she just jumps and hangs herself violently, like crashing through the upstairs window. Uh, the kids all looking on, like a few oh, of them are screaming, but a couple of them are like, Whoa, yeah, dude, did you see that? I, I love it. It's like there's the screams, and then there's like long, shocked silence, uh huh. Yet, yet more, e- even more fraught, fraught pauses of tension. Be like, Oh my god, yeah, I hope she got a receipt. <laughs> Jesus, it's gonna be hard to return that. Ooh. So, uh, of course, like this party sort of ends with, you know, the photographers, including Keith, snapping a bunch of pictures of the family. And we're going to see the reporters like hounding him at his office as well. And um, but it's nothing he can. It's nothing a man of the world can't handle. He's like, no, no, no. I can neither confirm nor deny that she was on drugs or that she had a, a boyfriend who made her do it or. Important, important man noises. So, yeah. So right now, like the story publicly is just like, what a crazy thing that happened at the ambassador's oh, no. house. Like it doesn't, yeah. nothing looks untoward as far as the ambassador is concerned. No. Just holy cow, this, this woman did this thing. Well, there's a moment uh, where he's at his office first before we get to Father Brennan's visit. You've got the other like American diplomat people saying like, hey, so uh, what about that Saudi Arabia trip this week? And he's like, I don't think I can go because I need to be with my family. And they're like, dude, and I'm like, know, wait, you just, your whole family just witnessed this horrible traumatic event. And everyone's like, no, you need to go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Gross. It's your ad to Riyadh. You gotta work. Oh no. But Father Brennan pays him a visit. Oh my god, Father Brennan. His so he lets Father Brennan into the office. One, Father Brennan locks the door behind him. Uh-oh. Two starts with the following two sentences. Uh-huh. We haven't much time. You must accept Christ as your savior right now. I mean, we go to we we went to church on Sunday. Is drink that, his that, blood. Drink it. Oh my God! I got to drink his blood like right now. <laughs> Jesus, you're kind of giving me the hard sell here, sir. 
so he also but, he, but even yeah. even like yeah like way down into this conversation he's like i was there i was there at the church and even that sort of like you know robert thorne sort of raises an eyebrow at this asks no follow-up questions no and, and i sort of understand because brennan comes in all the way at 11 instead of starting yeah. gently um he has no idea how to present his story because he buries the lead to I was at the hospital the night your son was born. I witnessed his birth. His mother was a uh, he gets the jack out and then they security hauls him away. Son of a jackal. My God. I can't you if you don't have captions on, which I usually do. But if you don't have captions on your television, it's hard to understand that he says his mother was a jack, you know, like that he's yeah. about to say jackal. But you just see the word jack dash 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 on the captions, and I'm like, jackass, jack rabbit. I could. His mother I was had a no jack idea. off. Yeah, your mother was a jack off. And other Boston sayings. <laughs> yeah, I had that very thing. I was like, jack what? off, jackass. Like, what was he Michael about Jackson? to call her? Yeah. Wait. Did his mother was a Jackson family member. It's a Jackson family five. Uh -huh. oh, son of a five Jacksons. <laughs> so, anyways. And they're like, you gotta go. Uh-huh. <laughs> you are taking up too much of the ambassador's time, and you're making him very scared. Yes. So please escort this man from the building. But that's okay, because he's going to lurk outside Gregory Peck's office. Yeah. And stalk him for a little bit. Just just some casual stalking. I have no qualms against Gregory Peck here, against Robert not wanting to believe this man. Because at no point <sighs> does Father Brennan ever present a, a narrative. He never <laughs> yeah, no. makes a strong case at all. Well, we, we Father 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 Brennan was going through some shit. He was. I mean, we learned <laughs> later that he was on all, all kinds of like pain meds. Yeah. So like he was he was good to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. So he was good to leave that room, really. Right. Because it meant danger yes. from unknown Satanists lurking in all the bushes. Right. So I'm not gonna be too mad at Robert for just dismissing Father Brennan. I am gonna be mad at Robert for just having fucking Mrs. Baylock show up and be the new this nanny. Is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, our house is so big. Like, we just hired a nanny, and I don't even think I hired them. She just showed up and mm -hmm. came with the house. Mm -hmm. I asked my wife, and she said, I thought you hired him. I said, I thought you hired him. And then we just found out there's the agency. Unbelievable. And like, agency? Wait, did we did we use an agency to get this nanny? Oh, dear. And How do we? Rich Kathy people even says, complicated well, lives. I'll... I'll call the agency just to confirm. Okay. And Mrs. Baylock was like, great, here's my references. Hand us, hands yeah. her a piece of paper. I, there's no question that Kathy never got around to calling the agency to yeah, confirm. I, I mean, oh. I, I think we're supposed to assume that she is part of this agency. Yes, her showing up is unusual. Uh-huh. In that the agency saw the, the incident in the newspaper and was like, oh, God, our, one of our one of our nannies killed themselves in front of a kid. Yeah. Here's another free Satanist nanny. That's right. $50 off your first month. Mm-hmm. So she, uh, she, okay. So first order of business on the day she arrives where it is clear that the clients have not called for her at all should be highly suspicious of oh, yeah. a rando showing up to say, I'm here to take care of your child. Uh-huh. We haven't invented red flags yet. And so the nanny, Mrs. Baylock, says, well, I would like to see your son. And Kathy says, sure, he's upstairs. I'll take him to you, take you to him. No, no, no. I want to be alone with him. What the living shit. No. And it's like, it's 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 really funny. Like upon, upon re-watching this movie and watching this movie multiple times, you can tell Miss Baylock it's like she's like really wants to just fangirl all over uh -huh. Damien. She's like, yes. wait, where's the child? Is the child in the room? Is he here? Can I see him? Can I see it? Yeah. I, him. I mean it. 
no, 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 no. You shouldn't be around the first time. We're we're gonna communicate through weird subconscious language with this other tran- tr- dog transmitter. Uh huh. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> It's a generational thing, you know? That's right. Uh, you, you have to understand this new generation, these Gen Xers. Uh, but it's so funny. Yeah. Like, she completely dismisses these two parents. Like, there's no interview process. There's no, like, where are you from? No. How How's your father? No. None of this. Miss Baylock <laughs> has one thing, and she wants to bask in the glow of the Antichrist. Yeah. And she's like, oh, these squares, get me out of here. Unbelievable. Again, I I guess I credit this movie or, you know, give some credit back to this movie in the sense that, like, we're living at a time wherein we still haven't even gotten into, like, milk carton culture yet. We still haven't gotten yeah. into PSAs that say, say, say no to strangers, yeah. you know, shit like this. So the idea that if somebody says they are, then they are. Yeah. And look, I have some papers to prove it. Yeah. So, oh, well, the very next thing Mrs. Baylock does is like that weekend, they're supposed to be going to this like high end diplomat wedding or some shit yeah. in the countryside. And they're leaving to go to the church. And Mrs. Baylock was like, oh, Damien's staying in. I'm going to take him to the park. Yeah, he's going to go to the park. And she's like, no, have my child dressed and in the car in five minutes. Thank you very yeah. much. And listen, it is hard to refuse a woman in a turban. <laughs> it, it really is. Does anybody still wear a hat? I. She I is in her power. She is in her power turban. You better oh. fucking have her kid ready to go. And Miss Baylock is like, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I could not get over her outfit because I was like, did she just stand as she placed, as she placed the turban mm-hmm. over her hair, staring at herself in the full length mirror? I just imagined her muttering to herself, "Powder blue, power blue." Power I just, blue. <laughs> I just, what is this a wedding outfit? I just could yes, not tell. Is. Okay, it's the seventies, man. People uh-huh. just things were different then. Unbelievable. Well. Damien loses his fucking shit when they get up to that church. Like, they're like, oh my gosh, Damien, what's the matter? And it's this is like long drive up to this. Damien, you're shivering, you're shaking and shivering, Damien. Still non-communicative. Uh-huh. Does not say a goddamn word. They're like, what's wrong with Damien? I don't know. He's just, I don't know. He just seems so afraid. Even though Damien's afraid is just sort of default child. Yeah. I got like, no I know. sense he was scared. It just... It just seems like, okay, until they mm-hmm. literally, they're like pulling up into the thing. Somebody opens the door and this child goes Babadook bananas. He just attacks the shit out of his mom, like clawing yeah. at her eyes and her Rips hair. Rips that turban off the, <laughs> ripped off the goddamn turban. Like this is an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race mm-hmm. <laughs> or Bad Girls Club or like real housewives well maybe he was doing the coco chanel thing of like first turn around first thing you see in the mirror take it off off. (laughs) mommy mommy you have too many accessories (laughs) offensive she punched like he gets she gets punched in the face damien is like he's gregory peck just literally goes i I, 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 can drive on drive on driver i uh, I laughed so hard at this because it's not the Damien attack. It's the man who it's like the the, yes. the crowd. Yes. The man opens yes. the door, looks in. And he was oh. like, "Good to see you, Mister and Mrs. Frost, yes. uh, Mister Mrs. Whatever their name is, um, Thorn, yeah, Thorn." And uh, and your your lovely little child. <laughs> and then he just oh. stares, and it and then just slowly like closes their car door <laughs> back on them. <laughs> like they have that's the only solution. Yep. The only solution. Oh, my. Uh, Your child is very unruly. Yeah. Please, please leave our wedding. And they don't go. Yeah, Damien they, gets his way. They get to go back home. And um, this is where we learn that we have uh, Mrs. Baylock now has a fucking Rottweiler standing guard outside the child's room. Uh-huh. And he's like, get that fucking dog out. It's like, we just found him. We just found him wandering around the grounds. 
Damien's what? formed quite an attachment to him. How? Like, okay. She's at the other end of energy from Father Brennan, but yeah. But in the same way, nothing she says makes any sense if you even listen to it. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, how is he like not believing Brennan, but he's believing her? And I guess it makes sense because she has the upper hand. She has already infiltrated his space. Yeah. And so now because she he's vulnerable to her with her inside his skin, whereas Father Brennan is always from without. So he can always keep the boundaries up. She's inside his boundaries. Well, she, they, they, both her and father, you know, they, both her and father Brennan are kind of equals in that they know the whole picture. Mm -hmm. They know the truth. Father Brennan can't quite condense the whole picture into like a narrative, into a complete sentence. Other than you got to wash your body in the blood of Christ every yeah. single morning in order to save yourself. You got to do this every single day versus Miss Baylock. She knows the whole picture and she wants to keep them in the dark. So she's just like, oh, I'm just going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. Yeah. And if in the case of the dog, you know, in which the sort of the Satanist handbook, the Satanist playbook, uh, ruffles the feathers of the parents then she's like oh yeah no we're gonna get rid of the dog tomorrow don't worry you don't like the dog the dog's gone that's right uh we go to the safari park cecil oh my goodness what do you do with i love it we get a birthday party Mm -hmm. We get, um, we get, well, we try to get the baby to its christening, but that didn't really work out very well. Uh -huh. We go to the zoo together. Damien's got some ice cream. He's telepathically menacing some giraffes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the giraffes are fucking hauling ass away from that car that they're in. Do not like. They do not like. Uh, the baboons also do not like, and they subsequently attack the shit out of that car. Oh my God, I love it. Lee Rebeck is amazing in this movie. She's like, she's so, like, she's so gorgeous. She's so beautiful. And and it's kind of campy. Like a lot of, this movie is very campy. Again, so we're talking campy. about camp on this movie of like, you know, kind of when the great, and I don't even know if camp can exist anymore. This is a question for the ages. But uh -huh. in the 70s, it was alive and well. Yeah. Because the status quo was just so good. They're like, okay. No, you're a serious actor. You're with your son. You're in your car. You're going to the zoo. It's a great day. You're having a lovely, great day. And then baboon attack. <laughs> what would Stella Adler have to say about this? Yeah. Go. And, and she's like, okay, okay. Oh. And she does a great job in acting. This, this, this movie, the circumstances of this movie are so ridiculous. They're uh -huh. like, oh, she gets home and she's like, you would not believe the day I've had. <laughs> I, I need a should. psychiatrist. I, yeah, I need that a That is literally friend. the next scene. <laughs> she's like, something's wrong with our child. Baboons wanted to kill him en masse today at uh -huh. the zoo. That seems odd. Well, so Father Brennan... Uh approaches robert again and this time he is a little bit more direct and just says meet me tomorrow to your wife's in danger she'll die unless you come so he does he meets him in the park basically mm -hmm. saying listen the only reason i came is because you told me my wife is in danger and yeah. i would like to know what that means yes and father brennan was like great let me lay it out for you as clear as i can when the Jews return to Zion and a comet oh rips the sky God. and the Holy Roman Empire rises, you and I must die. I'm like, what? Snaps. Poetry snaps. You're like, I would like to explain to you my case in the form of Terpsichordian poetry. <laughs> and pulls out a liar. In the olden days. Why is it always got to start with the Jews, Jeffrey? Why does it always have to start with the Jews? Oh, my God. With those Christians, they definitely need those Jews in Zion. It's very important. And um, like a comet. And oh, no, it's, oh, it's, well, I think that sounds like the book of Revelations. It is the book of Revelations. I knew that poem sounded familiar. Is it from the book of Revelations? Who knows? Probably, sure. I, it's no, been a I'm while. I'm not pulling out the Bible. 
to, I haven't double, read. to fact check the omen. <laughs> yeah. Please no. So and Gregory Peck is like, what the li- what the fuck? You yeah. the only reason I said I would meet you here is because you you made said my wife is in danger. Yeah. Well, he also says when he gets more direct, I mean, this is the most bonkers sentence because he was like, go to the town of Megiddo in oh the God, ancient my... city of Jezreel. There, see the old man Bugenhagen, who Bugenhagen. knows how to defeat the child. I'm like, what the? What the living shit are these screenwriters doing to these poor actors? Yeah. Like, okay, now take all that and make it sound like a, like like plausible. Uh, yeah, that's their note to the actors. That's what the, that's what the director did. Take all this, make it sound plausible. Buchenhagen, I want to know when we go to Europe, can we go to Buchenhagen? That we well, we we can go find Buchenhagen because he's a dude. Yes. I want to go to Jezreel, uh, Jezreel, and get a mojito in Jezreel. That's my, you know, you're talking about made up names. You're like, that's it. That's a good man. Like, hi, this is my daughter, Jezreel. Uh huh. Jezreel, getting real with Jezreel. Like, this child is growing up to be a talk show host. I'm so, I mean, okay, listen. To be fair, Jezreel is a real place. There's a Jezreel okay. Valor, Va- Valerie, Jezreel Valley. Jezreel Valerie? Is that your new Jezreel drag name, Jeffrey? Jezreel Valerie. <laughs> Valerie Jezreel. Um, so where, where is where is Jezreel? Uh, it is in northern part of Israel. Oh, uh, so and there okay, is so there is a village called Megiddo. Megiddo, okay. sorry. Um, all I is that where Buchenhagen is? Is that where we're gonna Buchenhagen find out? Buchenhagen is that just random American dude who just or was he British? I don't remember. Whatever, yeah. just that random guy who like lives in a cave somewhere out there and yes. has a bunch of cool steampunk devices and a bag right. of knives but this but that sentence is goulash that sentence is literally like <laughs> yes. word stew just like what you gotta you gotta help did you need like a whiteboard can you help me out with some visual aids here yeah because you're just going off Ghoulish is 100% the correct word that describes Ghoulish, yes. the delivery of this information. And Gregory Peck is so stuff shirted about all of it. He's like, huff, 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 huff. Uh huh. I'm out of here. No follow up. <laughs> and he just walks away and he's like, you Well, he does tell him out. before Robert leaves, Father Brennan says, Your wife is pregnant. Oh, yes. Your current son is the son of the devil. He's going to kill your unborn child and then kill your wife. And then eventually he will kill you and inherit everything you have. And that's the devil's plan. So in that, like at the end of the thing, he's like finally actually starts connecting some dots in the most absurd sounding way. And also, how did he know that his wife, like how did... Father, I guess that's like some sort of miracle telephone to Jesus kind of premonition so. thing, right? I just was like, when Satan returns, his grand plan is to work on infiltrating the family of the ambassador to Great Britain. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, Great. I mean, Satan, I want to start really, at middle management. Was he basically. really just wants to be like head of the debate team <laughs> at the at the mock UN. Listen, if you haven't seen The Omen 2, The Omen 2 is a delightful watch as well. It's it's even campier and a little bit more like a little more horror movie tropes, okay. but it it follows the continued adventures of Damien. Great. <laughs> trying to take over the world. And I quite like The it's, Omen 2 as he well. he live with the president in that one? Because that uh, seems to well, be Well, they the ship him off to military school. Of course. Great. Great, great, great. So it's like, you know, the son of the Antichrist gathering his forces i suppose Uh while doing drills in the yard unbelievable it's ridiculous okay so so robert thorne like gregory peck out of here yeah atticus finch no no not i i'm like i got i got other shit to do so the wind 
the wind the picks evil up wind. <laughs> the a evil mighty wind if from you will. the helicopter above <laughs> yes. um picks up around father brennan in the park lightning knocks off a tree branch he is running towards this church there is fucking latin choir full goddamn blast yes all the way up and the front door is locked and then the lightning rod on top of the church falls and he just stares it down <gasps> and screams as it scream queen him. like he is this movie's scream queen almost as much as as lee remick one could say lee remick was doing her heavy her heavy lifting back in that car with the baboons but don't count out father brennan if you see something falling towards you and you have a full like two and a half seconds move out of the way move out of the way especially if it's falling from like a great height especially if it's only it. it's like two and a half inches wide like yeah. you you don't have to move far to dodge it he is shocked he is he is literally literally skewered he is skewered yes he is he is uh he it's is like priest it, satay you know it, oh my gosh it is like a bit of chicken satay mm -hmm. it's also like um i think of like the the old um spikes that go on your on your desk at work so you can like put put no, notes on them oh yeah yeah they just like they just like pin that priest to the ground over yeah. a, you know at the front at the cashier at the diner yeah they where they yep. slap the receipt on the little mm -hmm. spike which that always made me nervous i'm like receipt Don't do that. paid yeah i know right you're gonna hit your hand oh no yeah okay and sure enough this shit is on the front page listen i know british tabloids are crazy but front uh -huh. page they, a they went body. a photo of a, a of photo. his dead body on the front page. I was like, oh my gosh, the tabloids are audacious. Kathy's losing her mind, and I don't blame her because Damien is a noisy little shit, and she just cannot handle it. And, of course, Robert is like, oh, honey, it's not that bad. He's just a child. He's uh, just she, playing at, at full volume. You two are insufferable as a couple. Yeah. Mrs. Baylock, get him out of here, please. And Damien shoots her the nastiest look as Mrs. Baylock takes him outside. I think they know. They're see, they're like hypnototing. They're like you kill her next. <laughs> Man, you want to talk about a time capsule of of uh, misogyny? Is the the whole psychiatrist thing? It's because rough. one. He essentially tells her in so many words, I think you going to see a psychiatrist has done this to you. Yeah. Two, he goes to see her psychiatrist who then tells her everything they've been talking about in their sessions. Yeah. I'm like, you don't have a right to that. Yeah. But it's of a time wherein husbands had full access to it's all more, of It's more fuzz, husband, father, you know, husband, like, yeah. oh. Like I, I'm the head of the household, and therefore I'm the one who gets all the information, even from this, yeah, closed and he is, patient confidentiality kind of situation. And Gregory Peck is literally, as as human beings, he is 19 years older than Lee Remnick, yes. so he has or Lee Remick, he has, yeah. um, so he has the air of her father. Yeah. Uh, so, um, she also tells him before he goes to the site, see her doctor, uh, that. She's like, by the way, I found out this morning that I'm pregnant, so you'll agree to an abortion. He's like, no. No. Huh? He tells the psychiatrist why, because the psychiatrist is like, why wouldn't she doesn't want the child? Yeah. Credit to the say? psychiatrist being like, yeah. she wait. She thinks the child is evil. She thinks the current child is not her own. She does not need to have another child. This is not a good time for her to be an, another, a new mother again. And he tells the shrink the reason why he doesn't want her to have the abortion is because uh -huh. it was foretold in the prophecy that this pregnancy would be terminated, and I'm going to fight to see that it's not. End scene. And I was like, and the psychiatrist, no follow-ups? You're like, tell me more about this prophecy. Right. Um, what what are you doing Tuesday at eleven? Yeah, I know. Can you come we should, see me? We, you know what? We really need to get you in maybe even a little sooner. Can, <laughs> start, can you stay overnight? Can you can we'll, we'll start running tests right now? Here, put this jacket on. 
Yeah, but I know the here, sleeves wrap around the back. You, what do you what do you see when you look at this picture? The devil and this picture, that is the Antichrist. And this picture, that is a dead priest. Okay, um, we have a room for you right over here. Uh-huh. Oh my god. So but all it's right. all very but it, it it's it is very like two men with pipes discussing <laughs> the just be like, I don't know, she seems all right. Just uh no, I know she I wants think she an, should have I, this medical procedure. <laughs> I know she yeah. wants an abortion. She's begging for it. She's really is not in the place to be her mother, but you know what? We'll decide what she does and does not do in my family. Well, you know who's gonna decide what she does with her body is Damien. That's right. Oh my god, this the tricycle of death. This Apparently is when nothing... I texted you last night. Yes. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? Tricycle <laughs> of death, man. Nothing. I maybe it's because I don't have kids. I don't find children like like a screaming child is not like the most terrifying thing in the world to me. And maybe it's because my mind and my body have not been worn down to a nub by parenthood. Yeah. I would say that this is, you know, he is problem child or whatever, you know, yeah. it's bad seed, but yeah. like not in a way wherein the character of Damien doesn't, he just, he does some things. So what he does here is while mom is like putting up a new planter, a fern, because it's fern. the 70s. No, it's got to be a fern. fern. It's That's the totally 70s. it. And he like races his, you know, Mrs. Baylock lets him out of his little playroom and he races his tricycle right at the little uh, table she's standing on and knocks her off the railing. But my thing is, you have a toddler or a, a young, a five year old. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to, uh, at three points of contact, friend, like just be careful on shit when you have a little child around. And I know you have a nanny, but just be aware of where your child is. I'm going to put a lot of blame on Kathy in this scene. That's what I'm going to say. Are you saying that th th this, like, th the parenting in this is is part of the problem here? Yes. They're yes. like, we have a child? Oh, that's adorable. Here, take my child. Yeah. Just, just take it into the other room. I can't parent right now. I'm no. just, oh. I've got plants to hang. I've, I've got to hang these plants. I have ferns to water. <laughs> I've got to miss the ferns. <laughs> not a euphemism. It's not Damien with the tricycle running into her. It's not. It's not that that made me text you. It's the way she falls. Yeah. Okay. Like this mansion, this like balcony on the second floor overlooking yeah. the, the front foyer. She is one hanging on to the railing first before she falls. And then she slips off of the, the railing and then falls down. These ceilings can't be more than like, a, the first floor is not, what, a 15-foot ceiling? Yeah. yeah. Let's say she's five and a half feet tall. I mean, like, she's, she's going to fall there. nine and a half feet. Yeah. Which, to be fair, for a 40-year-old is That'd not be rough. fun. If I had to fall yeah. nine feet, there's a good chance I sprain or break something. Yeah. But she falls backwards and then has uh -huh. enough time for her whole body to twist and turn around so that she falls face first, face first into the broken glass of the vase that she dropped below. Because it it's not effective unless we squish the unborn baby inside of her. She's like a cat. That's what I was thinking. Like, like they do the always lands on her feet. They do the spine twist thing. It it I mean it's a beautiful it's beautifully shot. Uh -huh. Like it's it's a really like great cinematic moment in the editing, the music. Like, you know, it's like she's kind of falls in slow motion after she lets go of the thing. But it's a little incredulous incredulity. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm is a bit of you're like what did that did that actually just happen? Yeah. And meanwhile, Damien just goes, uh oh, and kind of like runs away. Miss Baylock just gives full on evil Mary Poppins uh -huh. smile from yep. three rooms over, be like, it is done. Yeah, 
Thy will is done. Okay, so earlier, so she's, okay, well, let's just say, she goes to the hospital, doctor says she broke her arm and has internal bleeding. Yeah. Robert's like, but she's pregnant. Doctor's like, mm -mm, not anymore. Uh, no, no. And then she says to Robert, don't let him kill me. Yeah. That is a profound thing for your wife to say to you yeah. about your son. Yeah. I want to flash back to earlier when the nanny killed herself. Robert was like, I really need to be with my family right now because we've know, all right? witnessed a trauma of the death of someone we're not related to. And um, I can't go to Saudi Arabia. Here, he gets a phone call from Keith, the photographer, who he barely knows. And Keith was like, we got to go to Rome. Uh, I think I figured this out. He's like, Just, later. He's like, okay, let's let's head out of town with my wife in the hospital, afraid uh -huh. that her son is going to kill her. Yeah. Keith shows him the photos that he had taken of Father Brennan and all of the photos before Brennan's death. He had like this black line diagonally coming yes. through, foretelling the way he would die by the the nanny. Rock. The nanny had a sort of black line rope similar to the rope around her neck. I, I love us. Listen, show me with pictures. Uh huh. Like this really is like okay. In case the audience didn't get it, yep. Now we gotta really just hammer it home, and especially hammer it home to the Robert Thorne character. Be like, no, really, weird shit's going on. Your son is the Antichrist. Yeah, and he is himself concerned. Keith is. To say it's my problem too because I happen to catch a photo of myself with in a mirror in the background, and you see like a line cutting across yeah. his neck. Yeah. Um, Chekhov's beheading. I don't. And I'm very excited. Yeah. So you know it's coming. You know something's yeah. gonna. You're like, uh oh, you're probably not gonna make it to the end of this movie. Also, like I feel like, yes, I would be like, look, look here, Ambassador Thorne. Look at these weird photos I took. I know this is very shocking. Look, th this this priest died, and look, he's stabbed in the exact same way that I took this photo and this this nanny. And look, there's one of me. Here's one of me without a head, which means I am closing up shop and moving to South America. <laughs> yeah. And I never want to hear about you or your son, Damien, ever again. I thought you should have these photos. Aren't they lovely? Goodbye. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try and keep my head for as long as I possibly can. He shows him photos from the coroner's office of Father Brennan's body. Uh, and it turns out he had a 666 on his inner thigh. Yes. And Gregory Peck is mm -hmm. like, oh, was he in a was he in a concentration camp? Okay. Gregory, Robert, Mr. Thorne. Yes. Ambassador Thorne, please. If you see numbers, especially in 1976, you see numbers tattooed yeah. on the body of an older person. Uh, yeah. I think to presume Easy concentration place, yeah. camp yeah. is a very solid question. Yeah. This man's name is Father Brennan, <laughs> and he speaks with an Irish accent. I know, right? I'm not saying that there were any, there, there were tons of non Jews All sorts of in people. Yeah. concentration camps. So fair enough. They did not tattoo three digit numbers in no. a weird spiral connecting no. at the middle on inner thighs i do not believe listen he's got to go through all the quote rational normal quote normal mm -hmm. plausible mm -hmm. even explanations I when you see this tattoo and when you see it, it later on damien's head i'm like it actually looks like a ringworm it does it yeah. looks like you have it looks like they have ringworm. Yeah. That would have been my first question, not concentration camp. It would have been ringworm? Oh no. Nope. Biopsy says it's a birthmark in the it's shape of three oh, sixes. Okay. That's all right. Again, wow. another moment where I laughed out loud. Yes. Alone in my home. <laughs> and then suddenly we're transported from Jennings Studio. Now we're at Father Brennan's apartment. Oh dear! I've been and, uh, I've been doing a lot of decoration of my apartment, Cecil, yeah. and I just got, I got so many ideas from this Pinterest board of a scene. 
you're like, okay, I love what's going on here. What if, just, I mean, go with me here. What if we wallpaper everything with Bible pages? I know, I know it's crazy. I think you're going to love it though. I don't think it'll look dated in a few years. It's a classic look. Uh -huh. And you know what? What? And on top of those Bible pages that we're going to like paper mache onto your walls, we're going to source as many crosses as we can <gasps> uh, like as many crucifixes and really just on the back of doors windows everywhere everywhere you look crucifixes i love it because i don't have to paint i don't like yeah. painting no. and uh and the crucifixes like provide so much texture to the walls and way cheaper than like buying original art i know oh i love it you're a collector <laughs> They're like, he even had to live in the shadow of, like, he couldn't be out of, out of sight of the church. Um, I, I guess it sort of implied that, like, Father Brennan was born, you know, like, the, like, was like last generation potential Antichrist. Yes. You know, like, he had the potential to grow up. He had the birthmark. Although this whole thing about like the Jews and Zion and the the the, the, the comet and all, I guess we're sort of like, okay, I guess it happens every yeah. generation. There's a potential Antichrist. Father Brennan was, you know, kind of the last 50 years of Antichrist, but he yeah. just turned into a priest and got real, you know, paranoid yeah. about keeping the devil out. So, so the, so the devil's like, okay, fine. Father Brennan, yeah. you didn't, that, that cake did not bake. Let's yeah. just pull out a new recipe. I enjoy the the moment where in one of the okay, so he shows him the diary that that Father yes. Brennan had kept, and it wasn't a diary of oh his God. day; it was a diary of fucking Robert Thorne's days. How did he know? Oh, he knew because he was there. He he. So he just like this guy has just been like high key stalking. Yes, Ambassador Thorne for five years. Uh huh. Doesn't approach him except like in a crazy fit state of fit. Unbelievable. And there's also an article, not from a peer reviewed journal. No, not from uh, uh, not from the top the New York Times. It's like an not AP from, Associated Press. No, nope, it's none nope. of that. It is from Astrologers Monthly. Oh yes, my favorite blog. Is it from the Fordian Times? <laughs> it basically is, and it basically says that uh, five years ago on the 6th of June, there was a comet just like the it was the exact comet that the Magi saw when Jesus was born, yet it was on the other side of the earth. And that was all on the day that your son was born, the sixth month, the sixth day, sir, was your child born at 6 a.m.? Oh. Uh... Which child? Uh, numerology, everyone's I favorite know, they're really, waste they're, of time. It, they're really getting into it. Uh -huh. And then if you take the letters of Damien's name and then add a numerical value and then add them up, it all equal. We could do okay. this all day. Yes. Um. All right. Well, <laughs> but this is but this is I think the kind of the turning point in this movie this is where like like robert thorne ambassador thorne turns into gregory peck child murderer mm -hmm. like for the rest of the movie he wears black turtlenecks he gets like progressively more like anti-hero yeah from this moment on yes yeah he, he is just... going down the rabbit hole of the conspiracy about this child and we know as movie watchers this is literally the son of satan yeah, uh, we're in on that information. So he's not wrong. No, but it, but it is one of those things where I I remember my uncle, <laughs> say, you know, talking about cons, you know, having a family member that went down the rabbit hole of like nine eleven truthing, yeah. right? And he told that person, "Let's say it's all true. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with that information? Yeah. How does this better your life? Who are you going to call? It? Yes." And 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 it is a question of like wh what are you going to do with the conspiracy? And Robert's choice is to keep going down the research path to mm -hmm. get to kill his child, as opposed to returning to his wife. What? Because he's dead set on killing the child of Satan, 
and not set on living the things that are important in his life, yes. which is his family. Yes. Would be like getting his wife to a undisclosed location, maybe getting the, the nurse ratchet devilish Mary Poppins out of his house. Yeah. Fuck that dog. Touching Fuck base. that Manny. Like, like, also it's like, like as an ambassador, there's a lot of people in your orbit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I know this is the seventies. Things were different. We didn't have smartphones, but this movie like winnows it down to like, he has a lot of alone time. Mm hmm. And he's just a, he's just willy nilly style, just jump jet setting all over the world, solving you're, a mystery. You're already his, not his, doing your job. Just take time off work to be with your wife. Like <laughs> it, it's a, like I don't understand that he can't. I would love I would love to see a remake of this film set from the point of view of his like personal assistant, like Veep. Oh my God! Yes, like like the personal assistant. That, that works for the state department mm -hmm. that's like trying to move up the ladder that's like oh my gosh i have finally I, i'm working at the work at the ambassador mm -hmm. like american embassy to the united kingdom is like as good as it gets oh in the God. political system and then have this boss that is like so kind of like pipe smoking taciturn just like yes 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 everything is normal i am the patriarchy and just <laughs> do not question me and everything will be fine However, I'm going to need you to dissect this jackal corpse and see if it was ever pregnant with a human baby. Have this done by <laughs> by Tuesday. And you're like, I know, I love that. That was like, what? Uh, hi, Mr. Frost. Yeah, the the uh, the Prime Minister of Japan is actually visiting Great Britain this week, and uh, oh, they were like, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse, you're where? You're you're in? Did you say Jezreel in Israel right now? You're in you're, Israel. You're in Israel. Uh, you're in Israel. Uh. Hagen Bagan? What did you say? I'm sorry, I don't know. This man is—is is he with the Israeli government? Oh no, he has a bag of knives. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, when okay, do you great. think you'll be returning? Should I get a return flight for you? Should we discuss the menu? Um, at all? Uh, the guest list? No. Um, do we, do we have the the day, the calendar for the day? No. Okay. All right. I would love to see that movie. That mm -hmm. that is the comedy horror remake yes that deserves to be made <laughs> everyone just be like please take these ideas and run with them yes. neither of us have time to make these movies but we desperately want to see them oh my god just trying to watch some poor assistant try to keep up uh -huh. with these ridiculous like keeping up the facade of no no this is completely normal but you're also ghost hunting the antichrist all mm -hmm. in a picturesque jaunt across the European continent. Yes. Okay. So speaking of picturesque, Arrivederci. Time <laughs> to go to Rome and talk to a nun who works in a place where they have open elevators. Yeah. Great. I Great idea. This this nun she, she's she's like, no, everything burned down. It all burned down. What are you not <laughs> understanding? It all burned down. Surely there's some papers. Nope, all the fire. A fuego. Ah, it's a fuego. We're all killed. Arrivederci. And then this nun gets onto a completely open air elevator, which I'm sad we don't have. Oh, so I'm very glad. Make an we exit not. like this nun made. Oh, I didn't even clock her exit. Yeah, she like it's it's like in back in the day where like there was just continual like Move. imagine. Oh like personal shower like personal size showers that uh -huh. just continue went and she went oh, goodbye <laughs> she, this conversation's over crazy american asking about some nun who's the son of a jackal who's gave birth to a baby goodbye she does tell them about father spiletto who was the the priest oh, at the very beginning of the movie who has yes. given this baby to them she was he was in the fire that destroyed their records oh, office in the basement. Mm -mm. Wait, hold on. Might have a sneeze coming to me. Let's see. get okay. I think I'm good. Okay. She said he is in I didn't write down the uh the name of the town, some other Italian place he's in. He's he's staying in a monastery, the sister says. So they go see him at the monastery. He is mutilated. Creepy. Yeah. Like 
listen, you walk into a church and there's a bunch of dudes just praying black robes. I was like, ooh, we have, and these are the good guys. Yeah. He, uh, he's mute. Yes. Like half of his face is kind of like malformed from the fire. He's got a bolting, melty white burn, eye, melty, you know, yeah. melted. He's paying his penance for abandoning Christ, they're told, because he did he he lost his faith. I, I didn't fully follow this, but And he completely admits it to everybody. He's like, Well, how do you know he lost his faith? Like, oh, he talks about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and back when he could still talk, like he he's like, Oh, fuck Christ. Fuck that, fuck that guy. I'm gonna go hook this baby, this double baby up with a nice yeah. family. So Robert is like, where is that child's mother? Where is she? And bells toll <laughs> so oh noisy. And they they give him a stick of black chalk, which yeah. he then scrawls Chervik onto the Does he stone? I was like Sherbert. Sherbet. Sherbet. Oh, I love Sherbet. <laughs> sherbet? He wants like an, some, is it dinner like time? a lime sherbet is yeah, so like, good. It's yeah. great. It's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. Um, but Shibbert? Shiver? <laughs> Shibbert? Does this do these letters mean anything to you? And immediately when the the priest is like, Oh yes, I know exactly where that is. I was like, I'm glad you do, because this looks like gobbledygook to me. And if this is and then we still got it, we we haven't even met Buchenhagen. Oh my Y'all are just making up words. Oh my willy God. nilly Hagen, for this movie. It. So they it's an old cemetery. Um, it's in ruins. It's not active anymore. That yep. Keith and Robert go climb the fence at this graveyard. They find the grave of Maria Skian. Yeah, died June sixth, oh. five years ago, oh. the sixth month of the sixth day at six a.m. And next to her is her baby, Bambino Skian. Uh, oh, oh, poor dead baby. And you know Robert, what? we should. It's nighttime. We should totally start digging. People can dig so quickly in movies. Yeah. It's amazing how fast they, they really can unearth it. I guess in this place, it's more of a like. Just, oh, you're just, right. Like, it is a tomb. Like they just the, move the, the. Yeah. The, Even those things are fucking heavy. So it's a yeah. good thing he brought a friend. Uh -huh. Who may or may not die. We know he's got a death curse on him. We do. Robert is. This is the dumbest question in the whole movie. As they're unearthing this woman's uh -huh. grave. And he was like. Why did they bring her here in this terrible place? I'm like, because it's a graveyard. I don't yeah. know, Robert. It's, it's it's Satan's graveyard. Like, come on. Uh, it's just that like, we bury people. Yes. <laughs> and we put them in out of the way places when we want them not to be found. Uh-huh. They open her but... tomb and find the skeleton of a jackal. <gasps> oh. And in the baby's tomb, there's a baby skeleton, but it's got a hole in the skull. So they murdered him as soon as he was born. That's my son. Oh, no. And they That's murdered him to replace him with the jackal's son. And then the pack of Rottweilers show up and attack. You want to pet that dog? You want to pet <laughs> all pet these dog. dogs? You want to <laughs> pet this dogs? Look, here's five dogs to play with. Those aren't mm. dogs. Those aren't uh -huh. bears. Those are tools of Satan. Mm -hmm. mm. Dogs, dogs. And then it's just dogs. Yeah. A, f a, f a frenzy of Rottweilers. Yep. It's It takes a hot minute to get out of that graveyard, but they do. Not before Robert, like, impales himself somehow on the fence like, post. It's like, like through the bicep or something? Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh. That's, like, that's real hard, but okay. What did we watch last week uh, with the pitchfork? Um, oh, oh uh, pumpkin, pumpkin head. head. Yes, yeah, so he like throttles himself onto a pitchfork and from, it like, goes zero to his... pitchfork in two feet. <laughs> to be fair to pumpkin head, a pitchfork is sharp. Yeah. This fence is a decorative pointy, fence. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, not sharp. Razor enough. sharp. You would have to work real hard to just impale pudding on that thing, yes. <laughs> let alone your own arm. My God. But they make it away from these Rottweilers. They they do not pet the dogs. No. Um, he calls Kathy and was like, You've got to leave London right away. We're making, like, we're making now, arrangements. Get, get out of your bed in the hospital. There's, yeah, there's a dude on his way. He's gonna bring you to Rome. Why are you in Rome? That doesn't matter. Just <laughs> put your lipstick 
in a ca- in into your purse. Do whatever womanly thing you need to do to check out of a hospital. She's Unbelievable. like so, so confused. The, the 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 misinformation, not misinformation. The like like crossed wires in this movie. Uh huh. Is bananas. Unbelievable. But sure enough, it's uh she's trying to get un- get out of her nightgown over her cast, her back and arm casts. Uh, Kathy again, is. no assistance. No. no, no one on duty. No, no, no underlings. No assistant. Just, just alone. Just alone. Yeah. It. Uh, it's uh, anyways. Somehow, Mrs. It makes, Bailey. What yeah. Jeffrey? This makes total and complete logical <laughs> sense. This movie. Everything in this movie makes complete and total logical sense. But bef- as she's tied up, so just. How humiliating to die like this I with know. your nightgown up over your head and you can't get it off. But and she, she's but like, she's who's there? there? Who's there? What? You know who's there, Cecil? Mrs. Baylock and her Latin choir. Yes. And it's this this is this is where like this movie is so classy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. bougie ratchet no um this movie <laughs> is um this movie had like the 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 horror elements the horror sequences the death of the nanny uh uh-huh. the the trapped in the car with the baboons this sequence like her eyes are so beautiful underneath that veil yes like it's very like bride of christ yes. bride of the devil you know like mrs baylock is like giving full nurse ratchet eyes like uh, uh, like uh-huh. have you ever seen the movie um black narcissus i have not uh it's it's a really it's a it's an older movie and with a killer nun in it that goes unhinged nun wow and mrs baylock is channeling unhinged bride you know none of the devil in this yes. movie and sure enough she ha- like okay how do you kill a lady in a cast in a hospital? You could just strangle her with a pillow. Walk out silently. You yeah. could inject her with something. Walk out silently. You could stab her with some kitchen shears. Make a big old mess. But you know, no. You throw that bitch through an industrial plate glass window of a hospital. Uh-huh. Onto an ambulance, into an ambulance, through an ambulance. The ambulance pops open and Lee Remick has like one single trickle of blood out of her nose. And like perfect, gorgeous model face. Like, do you remember, do you remember when we watched uh, The Eyes of Laura Mars and how like, like giallo that was in like the beautiful death, the fashion yes. of death. This is one of those moments in which you can see the the thumbprint of the sort of 70s giallos happening. This like beautiful Lee Remick is like fucking gorgeous in like white and baby blue, like the Madonna. She's a Madonna. Uh-huh. A dead Madonna. It's gorgeous, but it makes less than no sense. Right. Well, she's dead. And Keith has found for Robert the village of Megiddo near Jezreel. We're going to get a Megiddo with Jezreel. <laughs> yep. On the Real Housewives. And they find Boogan Hagen. Yes. Oh, my God. Hagen Hoogan. Um, but... Do you remember the Farfig Nugan? <laughs> yes. You... Farfig Nugan. The because I asked riding. my boyfriend, and he's he's a little bit of a, he's a little bit younger. And he was like, what the, I was trying to explain to him the Farfig Nugan moment in time. Uh-huh. And he's like, you're insane. Yeah. None of these, none of, because Buchenhagen, Farfig, you see where I'm going, but I was like, do you remember the Farfig Nugan ad campaign? He's like, absolutely not. Yeah, that was very mid 90s, I feel like. Yeah. Because I feel like, yeah. And then, and it, was, also, then it was, yeah, was there was all the these shirts uh, of like, you, you go to Lilith Fair or Lollapalooza with your Far, for, far from Groovin. Far, far from, from Pukin was one. Far of from the, Pukin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that and Hagen Doss, where we just made up brand new. Foreign yes. words. Yes. Although Farfig Nugan, I guess, in German makes some sense that it's like, I think, the enjoyment of travel. 
Is oh, okay. Word. But it was it was not a word that existed in like a German dictionary before Volkswagen yeah. made it up, I think. Let's go um, see Farfig Nugan. That's right. So, uh, yeah, he's but working, he also yeah, learns that Kathy's dead. So yeah. he's in full fuck it mode now, yeah. uh, Robert is. Like literally just like catatonic in bed, just being like, there's there's help help me help me yeah which admittedly i don't yeah. know i think just walk away start a new identity start a new life new identity burn yeah. your passport absolutely i mean um, if i was especially if i was that photographer that's what i would be doing i don't that photographer the, the only like terrible choice he makes which is a fatal one which is getting involved in this at all i i yes. agree with your earlier assessment you pass him the photos you say isn't this something see you later peace <laughs> bro i'm moving to new york uh -huh. i know or la it, yeah. or tokyo i as far away from here and you and your cuckoo son i'm a freelance photographer i can live anywhere in the world i could live in omaha if i wanted to bye, -bye. it doesn't matter so they go to see Bogen and Hagen, who gives him seven knives that you have to kill this child in order, and they have to be placed what? in a geometric arrangement, and it has to be done on the hallowed ground of a church altar. On the altar? Damn. And it's like, he's describing this with the intensity, like, and this knife, this knife is the most important knife. This knife goes into the child's heart. It's not a child. I mean, the, the, the demon's heart. Yes, the demon. This goes into your demon child's heart. That's the first knife. That's the one that rips away his corporeal flesh. And I was like, okay, and then you go outward radiating and across. How long do I have to leave the knives in for? Do they have to set? Is it like a is it like a proofing yeah. bread kind of thing? Or can I just like stab and go? Yeah. This recipe is very difficult to follow. Yeah, like how precise is uh, – would you say this is more cooking or baking? Because yes. the level of precision is important. I know. Like if I if I miss his heart, is it like vampire rules? Yeah. Like what if I like – what if I use the second one first? Is that kind of – no? Yeah. yeah, that's right. There's a reason we don't say a pinch of baking powder in a recipe. That's right. <laughs> yes. Okay, oh so – Oh, my God. Here's your knives. Good luck. He wraps them in a cloth. Okay. Um, now they're just walking through the streets of uh, somewhere in Jerusalem or wherever and, and just um, screaming at the top of their lungs, kill this kid. Don't yeah, kill and this kid. He's like telling Keith he wants me to murder a child. And Keith's like, to be fair, it's not a child. That's a, mm, that's yeah. a demon baby. And Robert's yeah. like, I won't do it. And he just chucks yeah. the bag of knives. Into up, the street. Into the street. Where Keith is like, well, if you won't, I fucking will. Goes to collect the knives, is not uh -huh. looking, and a truck, a glass truck, parks uh -huh. nearby. The emergency brake lever is not very well secured, not and engaged. it just releases. Unsafe at any speed. Uh -huh. <laughs> and... Unsafe at two miles an hour. And that truck backs up hits a bump, a pane of glass slides off and just slices off Keith's head. Full. Fully decapitated. Brilliant. I love that. I like, this is the moment where, because this movie, we've sat through a lot of tragedy. We've sat through a lot of fraught silences. But listen, when this movie delivers, uh -huh. it's not like cut away to a shadow on a wall or Cut to the actually be like, oh, and we see the reaction shot. No, you see this head do like multiple flips, flips like it's the, the fucking air. Olympics of gorgeous murder. The this Giallo movie, Olympics. Yeah, I, it, this movie has almost no blood in it. No, I mean, there's like the little trickle of blood by, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, by when, when, when Catherine face. dies. Yeah, but like, but this is this head comes just, off. No blood, just like oh, no. it's 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 like like literally like a, like a, just a doll head that's just, just spinning in the air, and they do, and they did the same thing that they did with the when when Catherine gets knocked off the balustrade by by Damien, it like goes into slow motion, mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous. 
but now is the moment where you're just watching a just a mannequin's head just rotating in the air uh-huh. in slow motion. So in the middle of the street. Oh my god! And everyone's screaming. And I love this because he's basically like, "All right, okay, fine, I'll do it." That and gets I guess the I'll knife. And the next the- scene, he's just on a plane, on an airplane. Yes, back to the UK, yes. holding a bag of knives on his lap. In his lap. Man, you could do anything in the 70s. <laughs> I was like, do you have to check those? Oh, my God. This is worse than Kill Bill when she took that samurai sword on that airplane that one uh-huh. time. I was like, are they good? Uh, can I have the non knifey section? Oh my you could God. smoke on an airplane. Yeah. You can bring knife. Like, listen, fair game. Anything fair is fair game. game. Yeah. Back to London. Back to London. Uh, He's got to, like, trick the Rottweiler to lock it out of his room. Now, I'm going to say I'm going to say a point here. I love this sequence. This is actually, I think, my favorite sequence in the entire thing because, like, Robert Thorne actually succeeds. Like, he's now it's taken 90 goddamn minutes, but he's finally like, okay, I'm now in killer mode rather than incredulous dad mode right you know like finally our things have aligned he knows the stakes he's operating at a level of agility compatible with the stakes of having to kill the antichrist Mm -hmm. but here's the thing i love about this sequence is that it's this fun like game where the music provides the foley so normally it's the like Saunders! like the big loud uh-huh. thing. In this, it's really quiet, but it's very breathy, like it almost has like a midsomar kind of feel. It's uh-huh. music, but it sounds like the panting of the dog. And so it'll cut to this shot of like hey, like the sound, and then stop, and the dog will look around menacingly. Gregory uh-huh. Peck will look around, and then the music will begin again. But I don't know. I just thought that was a really cool thing of having music that sounds like the thing you're looking at. Yeah. But is still music. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I do remember the kind of breathy music here and then showing the dog. And I remember just being like, a little what bit a, what, it's disorienting what a, nice, a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, like what a nice contrast from the over the top Damien, yes. let me look evilly into the camera. Yeah. But just like this movie is not subtle no but it does have some really enjoyable moments like that well he does a lice check under damien's hair and gets confirmed in the dark too yeah that there is he's got ringworm or the mark of the devil one of the two on his scalp and this This child can sleep through anything oh my god uh well except for when mrs baylock attacks him run damien run she screams oh my god and then we have a long sequence where he's fighting off her trying to like bite his calf and he yes. eventually has a meat skewer another skewering he takes a meat skewer to her throat no this you know what these are they have a fondue f- fork bite oh you're right yes it's the 70s it's what is the 70s without some fern there's a fern death uh-huh. or a fern miscarriage i should say uh-huh and then our Main protagonist and antagonist literally are fighting on the floor of their kitchen with fondue knife, fondue forks. Oh my god! Fondue fight! Oh my god! And he wins, and he like right gets it right yeah. through her, right through her neck, and he walks out of this like this em- embassy home, uh huh, gated embassy home, covered in blood, carrying his child, and then drives at. 100 miles an hour out yep. of his driveway. Through the gatehouse. Police are on. Like, Which draws the cop's attention oh immediately. God. Sir, I know, I know you gotta like, you're, you know, like when you get a new recipe, you're really excited to uh-huh. try it out. Yep. You're running through the Whole Foods, just willy nilly pushing grandmas out of the way because you need those fucking artichokes. Yeah. And only a certain kind will, but you gotta chill. Yeah, you gotta you gotta lay back. Maybe your time. I don't know. Wash the corpse blood, the Satanist blood off of you. Just I don't know. Like everybody, like that's the thing. He goes from being the most incredulous to the most credulous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And my question here is like, what is your end game, right? Like, are you well, killing to kill the son of Satan on the right. altar of some church, which, which I understand, but my question is, why do you need to kill? Like, is are you mm. protecting the world? Yes. Are you protecting yourself? Because you're not going to be able to kill your what everyone perceives as your child. Yeah. And get without. Away with it. Yeah, raising some eyebrows without spending a life in prison, like in yeah. Great Britain. Yeah, life in prison, but as an American, he can like, be extradited very yeah. easily and get the death penalty. Oh yeah. So I mean, this is. Um, how are you? Like, uh, you're just gonna like do this and run? Yeah, like what keep is it your under, keep it quiet? What is your plan here? Because you, sir, might just be marked, and you might just what you should have done is just spend time with your family oh my god um maybe maybe protect your wife first maybe protect your wife because she might have been more help than father brennan and keith oh the god. wedding photographer keith the wedding photographer and buchenhagen and the buchenhagen knife of jezreel ni the knife wielding anti indiana jones over yeah. here so robert drags him into oh the church god. When they one of the few lines of dialogue, please, yes. Daddy, no. It's like very cute child voice. Yes. And he's bad, got that Daddy. Bad, bad daddy. daddy. Bad Ugh. Daddy tried to kill me on the altar of a church. So he doesn't get the first knife in before the police fucking shoot him. Uh, bam, bam. Then, bam, bam. Slow motion shot of a bullet. Ugh. Beautiful. Cut two. Two graves being lowered into the ground in a very fancy cemetery. And the U.S. Okay, so the last two people there. Oh, my God. Because we learned oh earlier that God. the current president of the United States is, I think that's what they suggested, that yes. it was his best friend, like his old it's roommate. His friend. Yeah, yeah, from college. So the president and the first lady, who we never see their face, their backs are to the camera, and they're the last remaining to stand over his grave and as the camera pans down between them they are holding little damien by his hands don't worry little damien we'll take care of you child turns over and gives like the cheekiest little smile like at the, the camera son of <laughs> satan Sondes, Dominus, damien. <laughs> let's rate this movie yes let's this movie's so ridiculous. How it's... approachable is this movie if you're horror film averse on a scale of one to ten, with one being not at all approachable, ten being super approachable for the horror averse? I mean, I'd give the omen like seven out of ten loose emergency break handles. It's got a lot of jump scares, a lot of noisy Latin choir to create that. Um, the death sequences are really disturbing and elaborate set pieces. You know, the 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 hanging. The, oh, the, yeah. the the beheading the the fall yeah. from the hospital the the impaling also, the what the impaling the priest impaled the priest impaled by a, a Pri priest sate the priest sate but it, this movie is almost entirely bloodless and also i find these sequences incredibly well done but also so out of place with this very serious movie that i just cannot imagine if you're horror averse, that you will not find this amusing. Maybe if I don't know if you're very very sensitive to anything like that, then obviously skip this. But I can't imagine yeah. you will not find this fifty year old movie a little out of place, a little out of touch with well, what be. is scary. And yeah, that's all. I it just it doesn't connect on almost any level, and that's maybe not the movie's fault. It may be the last fifty years' fault that has this movie created a lot of tropes um, that I think we've already processed so hard that it's hard to go back to one of the OGs of this genre and see it for what it is. Uh, it's campy. It is pure. It is a film unaware of how out of touch it seems. Um, so I don't know. I would say seven out of ten for approachability. As far as like in the horror canon, Cecil, like how would you rate this movie as just an overall horror movie? It's so funny because I think of this movie as like a juggernaut because this yeah. movie is trying to do something really hard. 
which yeah. is like have all the class and style and budget and prestige of an Alfred Hitchcock film. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got these sort of like, you know, might as well be Jimmy Stewart running through the streets of Marrakesh, you know, like in, in a, you know, with Grace Kelly next to him. Like this is very Alfred Hitchcock territory. Mm hmm. But every once in a while, just these wackadoo bananas horror movie thing, it's trying to be as classy as a thriller, but has a secret heart. And in that secret heart, it's like a schlocky Italian black gloved killer, you know, murderer running amok. Yeah. And it's that, that secret sauce that I think is, makes it a good movie because it's, like amazing actors it's a really great script like the first time the um the 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 photographer shows up the very first time the first time he's like looking at all the uh the, the birthday party set up he's like what is this the second coming of christ like <laughs> that is a like and which now that you go through the entire movie you're like that's a fucking amazing line for in a script to set like it is kind of well, sort of mm -hmm. the second coming of somebody but it's so campy. Yeah. Because in one minute, we're like, look, here's Academy Award winner Gregory Peck, who's just carrying some knives onto an airplane, willy-nilly style. Silly. In the canon of horror film, though, this is pretty much a juggernaut. It's it's pretty campy. But I think seven. Yeah. I think seven sacrificial knives. It's inspired, like, I mean, just watch Good Omens, and yeah. you'll see the sort of shenanigans that this is inspired. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's it's still an, it's a very important movie. I'm really glad we got to watch it for the show. Um, so, uh, however funny I found this movie is no shot at the importance of the film. But man, is it is it tough uh, at times? All right, so let's figure out what movie we're gonna watch next. You've got a scare die. I've got a style die. We'll roll those up. See what movie fits those two things on your scare die, Cecil. If you roll a one, our scare is isolation. Two, haunted something or another. Three, a killer object. Four, a zombie. Five, animals. If you roll a six, wild card. Whatever scare we want. What you got? That's a four. Zombie time. Zombie time. All right, let's figure out our zombie movie style. If I roll a one, our style is Asian horror. If I roll a two, it is a 1990s film. If I roll a three, it's something based on a book. For a bottle movie, something kind of single location. If I roll a five, a one word title, just a movie that only has one word in it, uh, in its title. And six, sci fi zombie. We'll see how that matches up. All right, let's see what I got here on the roll. That's off the table. Let's try that again. I've got a four, a bottle movie for a zombie. Oh, okay. Okay, so. We wrote down a couple of ideas, but also we'll check with our check with our letterboxed account. We have uh, users that follow us, follow our lists on there, and we put up a list of uh, for people, you know, for any of these thirty six the possible combinations. So um, people like to suggest cool ideas that fit these things. So let's see what we wrote and what other people wrote. So I'll tell you what I put down on this list, Cecil. If you want to check the letterboxed. And and go for what other people had to say. So okay, um, I put down Evil Dead, just Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two. Either way, yeah. um, Evil Dead that, or Evil those Dead Those are zombieish creatures, and yeah. they are uh, they're trapped in that fucking house. That's he right, is trapped in that fucking house. Yep, that was really Makes all I had off the top of my head. I um, know it's, it's a short list on there. Zombie single location. And I know a um, couple people on Letterboxd, I remember seeing a couple of people on Letterboxd suggested Pontypool, uh, which we have done for our Patreon. So go check yes. out our Patreon, uh, $5 a month, and you get access to our back catalog of more than three dozen other live streams. We have covered Pontypool, and it was a fun watch. Yes, what there's else a couple of them that people have covered. They've also recommended Rec, R-E-C. Yes. Covered that one. Train to Busan, also covered that one. Yep. Thank totally. you for playing. Let's see. So what do we have on here that we've not covered on our Patreon? Um, let's see here. Chuck Knot. Chuck Knot. Chuck Knot. 
Mulberry Street, 2006, uh, as a result of uh, constant urban decay, pollution, unbearable heat, the sewer rats of Manhattan are quickly spreading an unknown horrible disease that causes victims to mutate into ravenous, bloodthirsty rat creatures. Rat creatures? Zombies? I don't know. Question mm -hmm. mark. All right. Uh, mostly takes place in an apartment building, a city block. Okay, so that's pretty, you know, kind of one one location. Um, Ashy Slashy suggests <laughs> dead snow from 2009. Oh. Uh, isolated cabin in the middle of nowhere. Um, slightly larger bottle, which is, I guess, true. Um, but I think this is like Nazi. Yeah, the deep, uncovered Nazi frosted zombies. Nazi zombies, which I mm -hmm. think that's that's a good suggestion. Uh, Little Ugly recommended Resident Evil, which uh -huh. absolutely, like, there's zombies in that, right? There's absolutely zombies. Yeah, they're, it's basically a zombie movie, yeah. And they're, like, trapped in the Umbrella Corp labs or whatever, so uh -huh. absolutely that counts. Yeah. Ken Burt recommends Zoom Beavers. Zombie so Beavers, right? Zomb yeah. Beavers. Um, I, I'm not sure how bottle movie this is, but you know, beavers that are zombies, sure, why not? Uh huh. Uh, Henrik Erlinson recommends Dead Set, a British mini series, five episodes, um, in which is set in the Big Brother house. Oh, fun! So, zombies plus Big Brothers could be quite fun. Sounds like more like a TV show kind of limited series. Um, let's see. Uh, Benjamin Barron recommends Burial Ground from 1981, a schlocky Italian zombie horror movie. Okay. Uh, cheap ass sets, costumes, wild plot, a very weird kid, weird sexual politics, extremely evolved zombies, and odd ambient soundtrack. It's about All right. This is, this is the description Benjamin Barron gives. I mean, it's horny people visiting a mansion that it's overrun by zombies. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Say, yep. Yep. The plot writes itself. Uh, let's see. We've got Cassie recommending Quarantine from 2008. A news crew gets trapped inside an apartment building by the CDC to stop the spread of a mysterious virus that turns the infected uh -huh. violent. So quarantine, kind of like an American-ish remake of REC. Did they do an American remake of REC? I don't know. Yeah, this sounds very, like quarantine sounds yeah. very similar to yeah. REC. Uh, okay, Panic, Cooties from 2014. Elementary school employees fight zombie outbreak among students that turn aggressive zombies when someone eats chicken McNuggets or chicken nuggets that contain a virus. This sounds very much like um, the the Lupita Nyong'o uh, Little Monsters oh, yeah. movie. Totally, totally. Let's see. Uh, J. Allen Williams recommends Alive from Korea and The Night Eats the World from France. Both are horror movies set in an apartment complex. Alive is more hopeful and more fun but the night eats the world is also is great because it is appreciate that. Oh, and then Chippy Tom also seconds the night eats the world. Mm -hmm. There's some good ones on here. Some interesting ones. I yeah. mean, like I'm immediately drawn to burial ground because it's schlocky Italian, um, I which I always love shit like that. But um, dead snow is one that I've heard referenced yeah. a lot. That seems kind of fun and, bloody it's a um, true like here's the thing it's a true zombie flick yeah like yes they are and 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 you know i think there is something about the sort of cabin in the woods isolated we're looking for a bottle movie yeah so like nothing is more isolating than sort of so like being snowed in somewhere yeah um so like yeah it it, it definitely it lands on zombies in a really cool yeah. way bottle is a little expanded just because it's more isolated than like in a like you know Somebody trapped a in a basement or, uh, yeah. yeah, or something like that. Hold on. I don't know. I'd be down to watch Dead Snow. I think that's a fun movie. Hold on. Are you farting? I uh, no, I'm just pausing. Yeah, I'm farting. <laughs> that's that's what totally. No, I was just pausing because I was having massive what? sirens going on outside, so oh. I was just giving it a second. Um, yeah, I, I would hear, be down to I watch Dead Snow. Well. I will throw in a um. I mean, I throw in a second for we haven't covered Evil Dead yet. I know. Do we but, do this? Do but we Evil go Dead there, is not. I don't consider Evil Dead two to be. They're more. They're more demons. Rather they're more than demons zombies. than zombie. It's more bottle Deadites. movie than Dead Snow, but less. But zombie. But but less zombie. Um, like we're like you know we roll a capital Z zombie. Yeah. You know, which I think is more of as a horror movie podcast. I think maybe. Putting some weight on the scare is probably more important than putting it on sure. the style. 
Um, so yeah. really, I think really like the, the two big, like, I mean, the night eats the world. It sounds very much like Parisian 28 days later. Uh -huh. is kind of how it was sort of described. Yeah. A bit alive in Korea, Korean 28 days. Uh huh. You know, however, think, yeah. Burial ground between burial ground and, and dead snow. I think those are, I think dead snow is the way to go. It's a Norwegian film. I don't think yeah. we've oh, done much cool. from Norway. Um, and also, I think I think after mm -hmm. uh, listen after watching something so mainstream campy, it'll be fun to watch something like over the top campy. You yes. know, we're just gonna continue this slide down the camp roller coaster. And and the the cover art, the poster art for it, it looks real fucking splattery. Yes, it looks yes. like we are gonna get all of the blood we did not get in Pumpkinhead. Uh. Uh, in no, well, in oh, Pumpkinhead and in The Omen, and in The Omen, yeah, yeah. all of the I blood it's, it's, we cannot see. All the blood we cannot see. Oh, that's my favorite book. It's so <laughs> I love that book. Yeah, so inspiring. Uh, all right, let's do Dead Snow then. Yeah, great. Thanks for listening, y'all. Thanks, Cecil, for talking with me. And if you have thoughts on The Omen or ideas for other movies that would have been good zombie bottle movies, let us know on Instagram at Random Horror Nine or on our Patreon, where we have public discussion threads for every episode, and you do not need to be a paying member to participate. Although, we would love it if you were a paying member, because then you get our monthly live streams. So, watch Dead Snow from 2009 with us this week, and come on back next Tuesday for a new episode. Have a restful night with no one replacing your skeleton with jackal bones or nothing. Boo.